<laughs> I'm so excited. So this game is a video game called Phantom Dust. It is sinking. It is uh, probably like when people ask me what my favorite video game is, my my immediate answer every time is Phantom Dust. And I kind of want, what should we call this? What do we call it? Actually, it doesn't really matter that much. So we're just gonna do... Cause this is for y'all. Boom. The reason I say it doesn't matter much is because in game, it'll uh, make me pick a name. Anyways, this is my favorite video game. <laughs> like literally it's my favorite game. Uh, I love getting to talk about it, and I kind of want to play through it again for the first time in a really long time to refresh my memory about it, uh, and I figured I might as well share that with y'all, so... <clears throat> Nobody remembers anything. Not when the world changed. Nor why. The vibes in this game, you'll, you'll quickly learn, are out of control. It's so, like, 2003. Damn, look at that. Look at that big hole with two long columns in the middle. Crazy, like, discordant cello soundtrack. Strange apparitions began to appear. <laughs> that line has always stood out to me. Yeah, apparitions do tend to appear. It's kind of right in the name, apparition. Oh, this is so tight. So this is the HD remaster of Phantom Dust. Um, Re-release, whatever you want to call it. It seems like they could not get like these opening cutscenes in HD. I think this might be as close to the original quality as they could get, because this looks better than it did on the Xbox disc, but definitely like 480p maximum, right? I really treasure these cutscenes now. When we get to what the game looks like, I, it's actually pretty much this cool, but just any little bit of like lore or, or pre-rendered cutscene, this game maybe didn't... Uh, I, I really don't think it was as appreciated as it should have been. Which makes me grateful for every little bit of it we get. Every little bit of lore. It's been a long time also since I've watched this Oh, this music. Oh my god. This opening cutscene. It's been it's been a minute. A Psycho Blade is the name of the attack he just used. This music is kind of hitting. Some good like didgeridoo action. <laughs> We got some rival espers over here. Honestly, the fact that this cutscene is like double letterboxed and 480p is almost adding to the appeal for me. It just makes it vibier. Oh, this is so sick. I remember what's in here. Damn, I'm so intimately familiar with the Phantom Dust soundtrack, it really makes it stand out to hear a song like the original cutscene music that I've barely heard. Yo. It, who's in there? What's in there? Is it Edgar or is it me? That's Edgar. Damn, that looks so sick. He's those like those translucent veins that were keeping him in this cryostasis state. And then he's got what's this? It's got himself a little locket with him and Freya on it, bro. Yeah, it says Edgar and Freya on the back even. I love her like glasses that can kind of move around. Yeah, look at that. Can zoom in on stuff. So it re reveals that this whole time we've been watching this from Freya's perspective. 
if you've never seen this game before, if you somehow don't know anything about it, I, like, these opening cutscenes may be a little dry, may be a little slow. I'm begging you to stick with me. <laughs> I promise it's worth it. Look at that. Look at that cinematography. This is clearly a, a JPEG with some smoke over it, but that's all right. It, this is one of those interesting things where because it's been re-released and you can now play it in like 1440p or 4k or whatever resolution works best for you it's one of those it's this weird era of video games where the game itself looks better than the cutscenes do there's some big fingernails Hell yeah. We're getting closer to in-game now. It's funny, because these this is all in-engine cutscenes now. They're no longer pre-rendered. So what you're seeing in the background is how this game looked on the original Xbox. How the textures looked on the original Xbox. How the anti-aliasing looked on the original Xbox. Which means that as soon as we get out of this, it'll look much better. But yeah, that's an important thing to remember is that this is an Xbox game. Like... It's really easy to, to misremember it as a 360 game, especially considering how good it looks um, at the protagonist's face notwithstanding, I guess. Um, it's just a, it's a... It was a great-looking game then, and then even 10 years later, it was a great-looking game. So now, like, all this time later, it's... Love that font treatment. All right. So we are in Phantom Dust now. Let's hop to it. Edgar doesn't remember who Edgar is. Yeah, that's right. It is, I mean, it's a Japanese game from 2003, so of course there's going to be some memory loss <laughs> in, baked into the plot. Oh, do I have to talk to him more? No. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. There's this crazy, like, graphical artifact happening in his hair where just... Random triangles are popping into his... Were you the one that brought us here? <laughs> he, can't, he doesn't remember anything about his life, but he remembers how to sit like a cool guy. You've no memory at all, is that right? Just an image of some ancient ruins. And a strange gut feeling that you have to go there. We all have that too, bro. But how did you know that? He's the same, all of us. Now you. Please, follow me. I'll explain everything once we arrive. No, we're going to get to meet Ubiquitous and Leader. Leader says... That's one of the other phrases that's baked into my head. And paranormal skills. I see. This place is like the lost and found counter at a catastrophe discount store. I gotta figure out who wrote this game. Who came up with the line, Lost and Found Counter at a Catastrophe Discount Store? There is one difference. The two of you were found That's an old ass man, dude. Looking like Dilbert, like a Dilbert 2 drawing. <laughs> the whisper. <laughs> the whisper voice acting, the. <laughs> So says Mr. Stewart. Dude, he's got just straight up chimes the ruins. on his hat. The image I saw in my dream. <gasps> Leader says that the 
fact we all share the same image must I'm with Weeder on this one. He's right, I Dude, look at the weird, like, de-interlacing on this cutscene. I don't know if it's coming through on YouTube, but these vertical strips... <laughs> ...look so nuts. Are you saying you want us to join the Visions? We are very short-handed. Especially when it comes to people with skills. Yeah, the word skills is going to be important in this game. But I am haunted by the ruins. Yeah, I'll give it some thought. <laughs> ah, such a generous man is our leader. Leader says, Edgar, take your time. I gotta be honest. You don't mind us calling you Edgar, do you? We saw your locket too. Maybe it's just the voice performance, but I'm getting evil vibes from from Big Homie. Perhaps helping and his old man friend. To find her. And you. Oh, now we now we get to pick my name. You need a name even if you don't have memories. Just pick a name that sounds good to you and we'll call you that. Everyone picks their names here. This is a very strange mechanic you're about to see. Sure don't, buddy. All right, here we go. They can call me Alpha. No. Okay. Ice is perfect for you. The capsule in which you two were found was frozen. No. Okay. Age? It describes the flow of time. That's a shit name, bro. What do you think of key? It refers to the key for humanity. That's not very specific. I kind of like key though. Let's go with key. Do 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 do. That's my name. All right, we get to meet Meister. I want to. The first things first. I want to confirm what this dude on the right is named. We got leader, but what about spokesman? <laughs> spokesman is his name. Oh my god. Oh, this music. So sick. So sick. And just the vibes in this area. Like, I'm still kind of adjusting to living in a world where I can play Phantom Dust in HD. It really feels like it shouldn't have happened. It really feels like something that only exists for me and like six other people. But luckily, like five of those people work at Microsoft. Also, the fact that I can play this game on an SSD and shit just loads instantly, like the fat fucking wait times in cutscenes used to be the pits. What's up, no? All right, that's chill. I gotta talk to Meister. And I'm pretty sure Meister's kicking it around the bend here in the room with the pool table. Dude, my whole childhood, I thought that this was like just a, uh, a wagon, like a Donkey Kong Country minecart full of magma. And now that we're in this this HD future, I can see that it's a cybernetic, cybergramic pool table covered with orange and black megabyte looking vibes and a big ass pool cue. Like that's that's a, it, just to be able to see what that is now. I can't explain. Maybe if anybody watching this video has played Phantom Dust before and that's a revelation for you, Please leave a comment saying so, because for me that was huge. It's a it's a futuristic pool table. All right, there's Edgar, J. Edgar Hoover. Here's Meister. I have the look. The battle terminal. All right, Tetsuya. I want to read this sign though first. Warning, underground cave. <laughs> the rest of it's a little too pixely to make out. All right, Tetsuya. All right, we got our first mission. Oh, it just it makes me so nostalgic being in these menus again. All right. So, the game's going to teach me how to play it, but I already know how to play it. So really, we're going to me and the game are going to collaborate to teach you how to play it. If you've ever played, let's say, 
Magic the Gathering. Let's say Slay the Spire. All right. This game suppo presupposes what if those games were action games. I love that the little animated GIF of the thumbstick that popped up there was clearly an original Xbox thumbstick. So think of, think of magic, right? You have 20 health, or maybe Hearthstone would be a good comparison. 20 health, <clears throat> 5 aura. Aura is essentially like mana. It's your currency. Nice. So, this is the lock-on system. It's really, really running me through it. It's kind of a, for a game that's considered not the most approachable, it actually, I mean, maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's not a fair stereotype. Um, it's actually got a pretty aggressive tutorial. So. You move around in 3D in this open world. You can jump, depending on the character. You can lock onto enemies, and then you stand over these, and then you assign them to a face button. So you can essentially, it's like you have a maximum hand size of four. That's another way of thinking of it. So I'll put it on the Y button. We got Bullet of Fire. So that costs two, two manas. Oh, if, I just love the idea that I could tell a bunch of people about Phantom just at once. So. I can, every time I do it, it costs me two mana, and then as you can see, in the lower right corner, it's recharging. Now here's another thing that the, I kind of just skipped through. See how it hit the lock-on target thing from his yellow? If I jump down there, it's orange, because I'm close range to him. Now I'm medium range, now I'm long range. Every skill in the game is either short, medium, or long range, for the most part. So, see how bullet of fire is medium, that means that if I try to fire it at him from here, it probably won't even reach him. It's possible that it does, though. What I, one of the things I love about this game is that it's very, it's not very prescriptive. Like, if he's, uh, if I use a long range skill, and it happens to reach him, and it hits him, it's not gonna not damage him. It's gonna damage him. Another thing I love, destructible environments in an arena card combat game for the original Xbox. We're talking like, PS2 era video games. Another thing I love is that every attack behaves a little differently, right? So. Uh, you just learn over time some of the finer details of it. Bullet of Fire lets you do some very cool DBZ, not that I've, I've never watched Dragon Ball, but in my head, they do this all the time. They jump into the air and then fire stuff out of midair at their enemies. It just feels cool to do that. And, and not every skill lets you do that. Every skill has like its own little quirks and like hidden characteristics that you just learn over time. I, I insist on doing the final two damage to this dude in midair. Yes! Sick. I'm a natural. Meister knows what's good. There's so much, like, lore. I don't remember there being a character named O3. Tetsuya. Alright, so what's the next mission? He's talking about this gate up here. Let's go to Highway. Alright. Meister's second lesson. Ah! Sick. So, god, the dude, the fact that I don't have to wait for, um, like, 45 seconds at the start of every mission makes this game feel a lot snappier. So here's the second thing you need to know. You've got a very active om Omato out there. So, you might have, you might have concluded this before, but you have, like, three spawns here. So like, I can pick up a red skill. It's a long range skill called laser. Only costs one mana. Got a curve to it. So I can theoretically boink him from here if, if I play my cards right. There we go. Now there's blue skills, which you may, you may have predicted are defensive skills. So I've got this shield now. Um, so if he attacks me, I can throw up this flash barrier. Vacuum Slash. This is a close range skill. Now something important about this skill, so Bullet of Fire, see how there's next to medium, there's like an infinity symbol? That means I can use it infinite times, right? As you've, as you've seen. Vacuum Slash, on the other hand, instead of an infinity symbol, it's got a one. 
So I can only use it once, but it's very effective. So like, oh, I hit my homie. You hate to see that. So vacuum slash. Oh, he's gonna try to hit me? Bring it, bring it. Let me shield. Let me show off my shield. He's gonna wait till he's medium range probably, but. Hit me with that bullet of fire, bro. Come on, come on, come on. Look at my little, look at my walking animation. I love the going from facing forward to strafing to looking to the right animation. Not a lot of games have that. All right, if you're not gonna attack me, I'm just gonna, oh, got him. So because Bullet of Fire only does two damage, um, and this Flash Barrier has two defense, I'm able to block it an infinite number of times for zero cost, which is pretty good. If he had a stronger attack, it might be a different situation. So I'm gonna run up on him and vacuum slash him. Remember, that's the one-time use short range skill here. I love Vacuum Slash. I got a lot of fond memories. I've ended a lot of games with Vacuum Slash. Ooh. Rips. Rips to your Omato, but I'm different. I actually, I'm, you know, in hindsight, I'm pretty content with the way that this game rolls out its tutorial stuff. Ooh, I got three missions to choose from. Let's go to... Let's do another highway one. Yes, I think this one actually teaches one of my favorite defensive skills. Once it, once it stops kind of hand-holding as aggressively with the tutorial stuff, things get really fun. Because then you just get to do combat, which is like the best part of this game. So, we've already seen Flash Barrier, right? Cost zero, two defense. Wall. Uh, cost two, five defense. So it protected me from that skill he's using, which I'm pretty sure does three damage. But check this shit out. You ready? About face. You see that? <laughs> it reflects his attack back at him. And that's what this... Ah, Blaster does four damage, not three. I misremembered. Yeah, you, you can run away if you want. I got laser, bro. Look at me. I'm trying to shoot around the wall here. That's a good example of me being at medium range, but hitting him with a long range skill. That's the power of Phantom Dust, baby. Got him. Don't just fire randomly, timing is everything. True. I really think that they hit on, it'll become clear the more I play it, but I adore this game and I really think that they hit on something super special with it. With this comp, this sort of hybrid real time <clears throat> like, card game game. I still haven't played anything like it ever. All right, here we go. Ah, so here's the other thing. So right trigger targets, right? But sometimes there's more than one enemy. So you can hit, we got Scroto over here. I stick a little extra R in his name, because it makes me laugh. Um, so now I can switch between enemies with just a flick of the left trigger here. I get it, lady. Trust me, I know. What do we got? Ah, uh, that was a one-time use and I, I wasted it. It's not what you want. Lasers, so the thing is, the level you're playing on matters a lot too. Like, laser's not particularly great in this on the stage because it's, as you can see, although I am, I am, Wanted curving these bullets around the the tree here. Call me James McAvoy. Is he in that? Be quiet. So you might have noticed I'm like picking up skills that I already have and overwriting them just so I can draw more stuff. You really can only have three orbs sitting around at any given time. Whoop! That was my first real total misfire. <laughs> um. Ma'am, you can stop with the attention. I get it. Let's see if there's another Vacuum Slash waiting for me down here. Yes! And, all right, let's finish him off with Vacuum Slash and Psycho Spear. You get the spear. No, the tree! All right, I'll get them both at once. Wait, can I? That would be so sick. 
If I can... Yes, come on. Get in the same place. Ah, it didn't quite happen. That should do it, though. Hey, cool guy. Love being a green... a green man. Let's keep plugging along. Yeah, I'll take on a mission. What you got for me? You guys want to see... Uh, let's do highway again. I want to save panorama for later. An enemy with powerful attack skills on the highway. If you've mastered defense skills, you should have no problem. A full attack will likely lead to disaster. All right, Meister, what you got for me? Fire of G Gehenna. Ah, so they're going to give me a deck of primarily defensive skills. So they're using an, an attack that, oh, that costs them two health to use. You might have noticed I used a, a, a shield there, and it broke. I used the zero cost shield that blocks two damage, and it broke. Same thing happened with that one, and that one blocks five damage. So you see the predicament I'm in. Let me knock this fool down the stairs. Come on, Meister. Help me out. Oh, I can't believe that hit him! Alright, I need to get some more defensive skills so I don't just straight up die. Although, Homeboy is at 2 health. I could probably just finish this off right now. Woo! I just like to jump off at the end of the level. It's a flex, is what it is. It's like when, when Counter-Strike players do the look at your sniper rifle animation and then, and then kill a guy. Just so it looks good on the on the stream. It's like that. We think we found the enemy headquarters. Yep, this is it, guys. The last level of Phantom Dust. It's a short, short game. We think we found the enemy. Only a few so we should knock that way out of the chance. Considering the environment, short range skills are your best option. Remember your, your lesson on ranges and watch your targeting reticle. Happy to do it. Come on, Meister. So this is cool. We'll get to see some short range skills other than Vacuum Slash. No? This dude, no? That's my uh, That's my main when playing online. God, this game's vibe is just... You can't see it, but I'm doing a sort of a chef's kiss into the air. Just watching this pan across this lovely stage. All right. So, he's warning me about not accidentally kicking his ass. Come on down here, bro. Get the get the vacuum slash. You know you want it. So we've also got Splashdown, which is cheaper than Vacuum Slash, only does five damage, uh, and is one-time use. But it charges forward. So you see how I was able to attack even though I was down here? Because I knew it was gonna zoom me right in range. It's interesting. Like that's another example of like the different ways that attacks feel. Vacuum Slash covers a much wider range. Splashdown, you have to be touching them, but you kind of magnetize onto them when you launch it. I'm gonna kind of corner this dude here. Boom. See how see how big that is? And it kind of it kind of zooms into them too a bit. Look at that. Look at that. I gotta get some more attacks, but dude is at three health, man. Meister might finish him off for me. Let's see. Look at this beautiful cityscape. Also, there's like an invisible wall stopping you from going over here. Ugh. These Xbox ass graphics. It's a vibe and a half, man. I'm telling you. Are you ready to die? Oh! That's another thing to talk about. Attacks can be interrupted. So even though I launched Vacuum Slash there and got the skill off and used it up since it's a one time use skill, uh, he hit me before it could connect and it interrupted. Hell yeah. What else you got, bro? Let's talk to Meister. Ooh, one emission without missing a single attack skill. I just got an achievement for that. I don't know that I agree that I, well, I guess Vacuum Slash kind of didn't miss, whatever. So we're gonna go meet Chunky and tell me again where he is. Main floor, between headquarters and here. Ah, word, near the battle terminal. All right, Chunky looks a lot like Meister, if memory serves. 
Can we go in here yet? Or are, is no gonna happy mask salesman us? No, he'll let us past. Oh, we can't go in yet. I'm excited for you guys to see what's behind that door. He's fully got the same energy as the, uh, the little guy from Ocarina of Time who's got his arms folded in that opening village. So we're looking for Chunky. And Chunky, if, if my data is correct, this is also a sick fit, dude. I is, is vibing. That is, that is fucking wavy. All right, that's Arthur. There's no. Hey, he's moving. Got a win Chunky's approval. Been trying to do that my whole life to get Chunky's approval. I love this guy. So he's he says he's not a very combat guy. He's more of a survivalist guy. So it's gonna be on me to to do the the ass whooping. Okay, we got an enemy here who uses defensive skills. We got an anthro. Psycho Spear has a piercing effect. So even if he blocked, oh, he rolled out of the way. So you remember earlier when I said that um that. I'll just curve a few bullets here. That most characters can jump. What I was alluding to is that some characters, instead of jumping, have this cart this sort of Dark Souls, although this predates Dark Souls by some time, this roll dodge ability that uh kind of lets him get out of the way. Boom. So that's another that's another thing. Sometimes bullet of fire, even though it's a medium range skill, is best deployed damn up close. Because it gives them less of a chance to react. The problem is that if if they're moving, it may not connect. It's Bullet of Fire has kind of a light homing to it. I need to get better at blocking. This is this is my bad. Um, come here, Anthro. So I got him in kind of in the cooldown when he was coming off of the attack he just did to Chunky there. So there's also, like, in addition to being a card game and an action game, it's also a little bit of a fighting game. There is, like, frame data to worry about and think about. You kind of got to be considering all your all your options. Ooh. We get to go to the bar. We get to go to the bar. You know, I'm almost tempted to save this. I think I might save the bar for the next episode. I'll get us in the right place, but yeah. Next next time on Phantom Dust, we're going to the bar. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed this. Please stick with this game. Please stick with this. Like I, It's sincerely my favorite thing. I hope I've shown at least a little bit of why it's good, but you've we've only scratched the surface of why I love Phantom Dust. So I will see you next time.